me ask you a little bit about the EU. The EU uh, is mediating these negotiations between Serbia and Kosovo, and at least from the outside, they don't seem to be making much progress. Why is that? So, because, you know, in a negotiation, you, you have a table in between the two parties, which normally needs to be flat, uh, in the sense that there needs to be an equal footing, equality between the two parties. What we see right now, what we face right now, is the table is all upside down. So, despite the fact that Kosovo has been negotiating with Serbia for the past more than 12 years, 13 years, about 40 agreements have been reached, including uh, one very important one, the basic agreement and the audit annex uh, the previous year. And if you look at the list of non-implementation of obligations from Serbia, it's very, very long. It would take us until tomorrow to just read it. And this is, you know, it's very easy to confirm. You don't have to trust my judgment or my interpretation of it. You just pick any agreement, whether we're talking about the agreement of freedom of movement or we're talking about the agreement on recognizing diplomas or we're talking about the agreement on, you know, recognition of other documents or returning uh, of uh, the cadastral records which, which Serbia has stolen from Kosovo in the 90s and so on. None of these agreements have been implemented to a very important one from 2013, which obliges Serbia to dissolve all of its illegal uh, parallel structures uh, around Kosovo, but primarily in the north. Now, what happened in these past 10 years is that instead of dissolving those structures, Serbia has constantly strengthened them to the extent that these illegal structures have turned into mafia gangs and have also turned into the biggest danger for the Serb community who lives in northern Kosovo. What are these external structures specifically? These illegal structures are groups of, you know, criminals that are paid by Serbia, appointed by Serbia, politically supported by Serbia, and right now, after they committed an act of aggression against Kosovo in September, are also hidden by Serbia within Serbia, so that they do not face justice for the acts of aggression, and also other crimes that they've committed, like murder against Serb politicians, like burning down houses and cars of Serbs in the north, like threatening kids in the kindergarten for Serbs in the nor north. So those who are suffering most from this mafia gang paid by and supported by Vucic in Serbia are actually the Serbs in Kosovo. So all of this has happened in the past 10 years and including the act of aggression against Kosovo last year. Despite of all of that and despite of the long list of non-implementation by Serbia, guess which one is the party that is under measures by the EU? is the party that is at a 100% alignment with the European Union on every common security and foreign policy decision, is the party that never purchases weapons from Russia, China, or Iran, is the party that 97% of whose people are in favor of the European Union, is the party that has never committed an act of aggression against its neighbors, that does not destabilize its neighbors, that does not organize a coup against its neighbors, that does not use Russian MiG-29s to fly over their neighbors, that's the party that is under measures, Kosovo. So that's why the table is upside down. When you don't have equality as the very basics of any negotiation process, no one should you know, dream about uh, tangible results that can also be implemented in the ground. And my final point on the dialogue, an agreement was reached um, February 23, and then it's annexed later on in 2023, which foresees obligations for both Kosovo and Serbia. According to the EU and the United States, and I agree with that interpretation, it's a legally binding treaty. Joseph Borrell, the high rep, has also informed the UN Secretary General of the United Nations, as per practices in international law, that it's a legally binding treaty. But for all the experts out there, what happens if one of the parties formally withdraws from a treaty? The basic principle of international law, the other party has no obligation to implement it either. It's not that I want to oversimplify it, it's just like you, you enter into a contract for the sale of goods. You pay the price, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you're asked to pay the price 
And then to never, and, and then you say, okay, it's good for the other party to never deliver goods. No, if the other party doesn't want to deliver the goods, you don't have to pay, pay, the, pay the price either. So again, not to oversimplify it, but you know, we hear a lot from European bureaucrats, pacta sunt servanta, the contract should be respected. Yes, that's exactly what we want. But Serbia has formally withdrawn from this treaty through letters sent by its former prime minister to the European Union, through statements made by its president and its current prime minister, who say this is not a legally binding treaty and we will never implement it. Now, despite of them saying that, everyone in the Europe, well, not everyone, again, not to generalize, most in the EU say, well, Kosovo should unilaterally implement its obligations. Now, I strongly believe that we're in a situation where we need to bring back equality to the table. If parties are treated on an equal footing, then we can have success. And we are very confident that with the changes in the European Union, with the new high rep coming up, that equality is going to come back to the table as that precondition to success. So we're confident and we're hopeful, but we're going to have to wait for a few months for, for those successes to be seen, I believe. Okay. If you have a question, you can